Hello everyone, I'm back with another PID video. Today we are going to be talking about how to make your robot follow a line perfectly using PID math. Let's get right in. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is go to this variables tab. And you're going to get very, 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 very familiar with the variables tab because we are going to be making a ton of variables today. First thing you want to make is called KP. And this is sort of the variable that we use to adjust the, the proportional in the program. And we're not going to set it to anything just about yet. Next, you want to make ki. And this is the one that you use to tune the integral in the program. And then we are going to want to make kd, which is used to tune the derivative in the program. And just like the other two, we are not going to be setting this one just yet. Then we're going to, be, we're going to want to make a variable called target value. And if you've watched any of my other um, line following videos, you are going to know what target value does. If not, well, I'm here to explain that to you. Target value is basically the goal value you want your color sensor to read. So how you find this is you basically just put your spike prime or EV3's color sensor right in the middle of that white between those white and black lines. And that should give you the value that you want to see. So right now mine is like 20, 25, but it varies a lot based on lighting conditions and your robot. So I'm going to set this to 25 for my robot. You're going to have to change it based on your robot. And that's, that's the case for all of the values we'll be going over today. Now we're going to want to make a variable called loop delay time. And we're going to want this just because this is a number that you use for adjusting the integral and derivative values. And it's also how long you wait before you do the PID code again. And I've found that 0.05 or a 20th of a second is a good time. The only reason we have this is because it would get tedious to type 0.05 every time. And then we're going to want to go to movement and grab a set movement motors to mine are B and C and set movement speed to some number. I find that 25 works well. Uh, as you can tell, I'm using EV3 Classroom. This works just as well in Spike. It's exactly the same principle. Now we're going to want to go to Control and grab a forever loop. I'm using a forever loop. Um, of course, you could use my rotations loop that I have a video about. You could use it for seconds if you want. Really, just about anything goes. We are going to want to go to the variables, and we're going to want to make another variable called input. So we're going to set input to the reflected light intensity of our goal sensor. It'll be different for yours. And we're going to want to subtract that from our target value. So this just makes it so that our input is, like, let's say our robot is right on. It's exactly on 25. So the reflected light intensity is 25. 25 minus the target value of 25 is 0. So it's not going to change anything at all. It's perfect. Why would it? If, if our reflected light intensity is reading like 50, 50 minus 25, it's 25. So it's going to be like, oh, we kind of need to change. And if our reflected light intensity is something like 2, it's going to be like, oh, 2 minus 25, that's negative 23. We're going to have to make some changes. We're going to want to make another variable. This gets really fun, guys and call it error. So we're going to set error to 0 minus input. And this basically just flips our input so our robot can work with it. Um, depending on the way your motors are, you might not need to flip it at all. Um, or if you're following the other side of the line, you won't need to flip it. So you can just have it set error to input if you're following the other side of the line. In my case, I'm following the right side of the line, so I do need to flip it. Then we're going to go to our variables section. And now I'm just going to make three variables at once. We've got proportional. We've got integral. And we have derivative. And I mentioned before that these kp, ki, and kd values tune the proportional, integral, and derivative values. So now we're actually going to put those 
in our code. So proportional is basically just equal to error. Super simple right there. Um, that's because with our error flipped, the proportional, it's like, oh, the if let's say it's seeing a light value of 50. So that's 20 more than it needs to, well, graphically 25 more than it needs to. It's going to correct the exact opposite. And of course, there's a, there are a few problems with proportional. Like if you overshoot, then it needs to recorrect and recorrect. So it leads to some wiggling when you first get line following. It also isn't the best around turns. So that's where integral comes in. Integral kind of smooths out the error. So if there's a ton of wild oscillations, integral helps kind of smooth that over by, so we need integral. plus the error times. And this is where we need the loop delay time block. And basically, the reason we need that loop delay time is sort of to shrink this value, because otherwise it'd be absolutely huge. When we multiply it by 0 0.05, it makes it a bit smaller and easier to deal with. And now, you guessed it, we're going to set the derivative. And derivative is really exciting. Um, because it really, it, it's like 10% of this code, integrals around like 2%, derivatives like a 10 to 15% and proportional to the rest. You really can't make a line follower without proportional. But derivative is exciting because it helps prevent like almost all overshoot if you have your values properly tuned. And to, the, to, to do this, it takes error and now we're going to make another variable. I, I swear, guys, this is the last one. And this is previous error. And if we subtract error from previous error, it compares those. And we're going to divide it by loop delay time just to make it a bit larger. What this does is it compares the error and the previous error. And if there's a big difference, it'll continue changing a lot. But if there's only a little difference, it's going to only change a bit. And this is really useful because it prevents like almost all your overshooting. That's quite nice. And now we need to set the previous error to the error for this loop so that we can have a new error for the next loop. And we are also going to want to set like put a little weight block, whoops, that waits for loop delay time. And now guys, you get to do the really fun part of tuning your values. A very good starting value for KP is one. And you can tune it from there. If your robot is falling a bit too smoothly and it's missing some corners, you can make it bigger, like two. If it's falling too sharply and it's falling off the line even when it's not supposed to, you can change it to something like 0 0.5. Starting with 1 is a great bet. With KI, I find that 0 0.1 is a good value. You're going to have to tune it yourself, the, the really fun trial and error stuff that, ev that everyone loves. Um, and for KD, I like 0 0.25. And all of these are going to change depending on the size of your wheels, your lighting condition, what your mat looks like the lines you're trying to follow. Um, same with your target value. Just give it a bit of trial and error. If you have any problems, email me. Questions, suggestions for future videos, I take feedback. Here it is, in action. This line follower allows for unparalleled smoothness on the turns. While even letting the robot correct at crazy angles. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, leave suggestions in the comments. Like I said, I always take feedback. Hope this works for your FLL team, and good luck this season.